Good evening everyone, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update. Tonight, the 8th of February 2014. Tonight's update will basically talk about the Western Australian low uh, and possible cyclone to come from that. And we'll also talk about some of the rain that's happening over the northern parts of Queensland and the Northern Territory. Some phenomenal rainfall totals. So that's, that's the update tonight. It'll probably be a little bit shorter than normal. Earlier this afternoon, the Bureau of Meteorology in Western Australia issued a tropical cyclone advice, a tropical cyclone watch from Cockatoo Island all the way to Port Hedland. And looking at the track map, they expect the tropical low is likely or most likely to move just offshore off the coast, form into a Category 1 cyclone. It won't take very long. Once it's off the coast, it'll form into a Cat 1 within about 6 to, t 6 to 12 hours. So expecting a Category 1 cyclone and then pushing uh, back to the south and crossing the coast fairly quickly between Port Hedland and Sandfire Roadhouse. Now there is some model guidance that suggests that that crossing may happen a little bit further to the west and there's also some model guidance that still keeps the system inland so there is still an error margin. You can see here the error margin is quite large uh, by the time we get to about day three so it could be located still well offshore or it could be located uh, well inland. So that error margin overall uh, isn't too large but in terms of how close it is to the coast it could make all the difference see the thing is if the system got a little bit further offshore it would not be interacting with the landmass and so we might even see a category 2 system look folks to be honest uh, you know you couldn't rule out an even more severe system if it got off the, off the coast uh, a lot further than expected at this stage though, this seems to be the model trend which is just getting it very close to the coast and then eventually hitting the coast to the east of Headland. So that's the current trend and that's what the Bureau are going with, with a relatively weak tropical cyclone. So the past 24 hours on satellite, we see the low has moved basically from very near Kununurra well to the west now of Kununurra and continues to move in a west-southwest direction and will eventually exit the coast near or to the south of Broome is what we expect it to do. Looking at it to the north though, we see some very intense convection developing uh, in association with the monsoon trough. We see a lot of convection, a lot of convective activity actually pushing into the into the western top end coastline just to the south there of Darwin, most of it. But we see just a very active period, an active region I should say, in the North Kimberley and heading into the uh, Northern Territory, Greater Northern Territory or northern half of the Northern Territory region. We also see a lot of dry air back here to the west. Now that can become pivotal if the cyclone decides or if the low decides to push a little bit further towards the Karatha area in the longer term. We don't expect that to happen but if it does do that dry air may become a, a significant impactor on this particular low. But at the moment looks like a very well structured tropical low. You can see it spinning away very very well here. Now remembering a few few days ago this was actually the low that we showed crossing the coast south of Wat Air in the Northern Territory and we actually said it was the closest thing we've ever seen to a tropical cyclone not being named a tropical cyclone. It actually had a perfectly round symmetrical eye on radar which was phenomenal for a system like that uh, to, do, to do so. So really folks it's continued that excellent and I mean excellent structure as it heads to the west. Looking at our cyclone formation probability guidance, we see some pretty decent conditions there over the next 48 hours for a tropical cyclone to form uh, anywhere really from about Broome, off, offshore off Broome, uh, all the way through to the nor far northern Kimberley. And so we see that if the system pops offshore anywhere over here in the next two days, we're going to see pretty favourable conditions for its development. We also see a little pocket of favourable conditions in the southeastern or southern Gulf of Carpentaria, not as favourable as the ones off WA. But ex-cyclone Fletcher is still located out here and is going to start pushing in a west to southwest direction shortly. Now, if he gets over water, he might he might be a, um, a I guess a system to watch because the conditions here aren't all that unfavourable just yet. So the Gulf can still fire if Fletcher can get, or, sorry, X Fletcher can get back offshore. But at this point in time, he seems to want to track southwards and then southwestwards uh, very, very close to the coast. See, both of these systems, I guess their biggest limiting factor at the moment is going to be their coastal proximity. 
If we look at the latest GFS track forecast from 10 a.m. this morning or 8 a.m. this morning WA time, we see that the system pushes offshore only for a few hours in the latest GFS model and then pushes back to the south and then southeast across inland parts of Australia. So given that particular track, it would find it very difficult to form into a tropical cyclone at all. But the GFS seems to be a little bit of a western, uh, sorry, eastern outlier in the model guidance. So let's have a look at the Euro. So if we track the tropical low using the Euro high resolution model, we can see that it currently tonight will lie uh, just to or well to the east northeast of Broome. Now, as it tracks over the next few hours on Sunday morning, it's expected to lie a little bit closer to Broome. As we head to Sunday night, we see the system is tracking very, very close to Broome. Look, it should possibly pop off the coast or, or get very close to that coastal fringe uh, right in the vicinity of Broome or just to its south uh, as we head through to Monday morning. So here it is on Monday at 4 at 2 a.m. WA time, and we see that it's starting to produce gales as it gets close to the coast. As we head towards the 8 a.m. period on the Monday, we see the system just pops offshore. Now, we've got excellent agreement between the models in the model run, as well as pretty good agreement between the GFS and the EC. So what you're seeing now is the model run yesterday. What you're seeing is now is the model run today for exactly the same moment in time in the future. So this is Monday morning, 8 a.m., this is the old run, this is the new run. So very, very tight agreement. That gives you a fairly high confidence that this scenario will play out. And if we look at that and compare that to around about the same time with the GFS, we see even though the GFS keeps it a little bit more inland, it's in the same vicinity within about 50 kilometres, which is just phenomenal agreement between the model guidance. We don't, we certainly don't see this in Queensland. Uh, so the fact that we're seeing it in WA is pretty cool. And once again, this is the latest GFS run, uh, just released about two, two to five minutes ago. Uh, so really, folks, it's very tight agreement that it's going to pop off the coast very close to the uh, Broome region. And from there, though, uh, some of the guidance continues at pushing along the coast. Some of the guidance pushes it a little bit further offshore. So you can see here Monday night, it's pushing back onshore, but it's created gales all around its centre. So it is a Cat 1 cyclone. Uh, as we head to Monday night and Tuesday morning. So you can see here the gale's really wrapping around it, but it hugs the coast basically all the way down and then finally crosses the coast around about Port Hedland or just to the east of Port Hedland and then pushes inland. Uh, it's still creating gales. And look, folks, very heavy rain, particularly to the east and along the actual line of the system. So if we look at the rainfall um, in this chart over that same period, and these lighter shadings, the yellows and the reds are really, really heavy rain. The greens, moderate to heavy falls, uh, and the blues, moderate falls. The pink stuff's fairly light. So you can see here, as we progress in each three-hour period, we're seeing some very heavy rain in the vicinity of the low, especially also to the just to the east of where the low's tracked. So you can see here uh, in, that in that northerly flow is where all that rain is. So as you head further west towards Karatha, much less rain coming from this system. And, and as you head towards Barrow Island on slow, uh, very, very little rain actually falling from the system. So it's really the areas that are in direct threat and also the areas to the east that are expecting that heavy rainfall. So I guess D-Day is the Monday where it pops off the coast. So it's important that we look at what are the elements around it doing on the Monday that would either suggest rapid development or not much development at all. Now remember, the, the thing that I think is going to be the biggest hindrance for this is going to be its proximity to land. So if it gets off land, we could be in business for a, a slightly more significant system than what the models are showing. But at this point in time, if it tracks along the coast like, it suggest, like the models suggest, can't see this becoming a very significant cyclone at all. Despite the fact that if we look at things like wind shear, so there's our cyclone, if we look at things like wind shear, wind shear is pretty light around the system. There are little po pockets of moderate wind shear, but overall the wind shear around the system itself, probably 10 to 15 knots, which is pretty favourable, and we can see that using the purple colouring. The blue colouring here is marginally favourable. The green colouring is unfavourable. So really, folks, it's sort of teetering on the edge of very favourable to marginally favourable conditions conditions there in terms of wind shear. If we look at the amount of moisture in the atmosphere, we see a lot of dry air to the west. Now, this is what's going to limit the rainfall potential for areas further to the west of the track. And so, 
luckily at that point in time, that dry air is not wrapping around the circulation. But as the circulation pushes further to the west, it may become impacted by that dry air. So that's why if it, say, pushes west towards the Karatha region, which, as I said before, we don't expect it to, but let's say it does, it's going to start to really be impacted by this dry air. So... If we track the system another 24 hours and see just over the course of time what shear does later on Monday, so by 10 o'clock in the morning, by 10 o'clock at night or 8 o'clock at night WA time, we see that it's not fully favourable, but overall the system will lie very in a marginally favourable development in terms of wind shear with 20 knots or 15 to 20 knots around it. Once again, if we track the humidity levels, we see that this dry air still does not have a chance to wrap around the system, which is great news if you need some rain. So that dry air is at bay. We get moist air that actually starts to push further to the west and therefore uh, actually brings in or what we call advection of moisture to the west of the system as well. So that means the dry air is even less likely to impact the system as it continues to track further to the west. Now, bear in mind that sometimes model guidance doesn't predict dry air very well. And so uh, it only takes one of these tongues of dry air to wrap around and it only takes a few hours for that dry air to wrap around before the convection completely disintegrates. So uh, just be aware of that that it's always touch and go when it heads towards the West Pilbara like that, whether that dry air will penetrate. But at this point in time, models suggest not, and that's why they're suggesting some very heavy rainfall totals along the track. So if we look at the ensemble guidance for the Monday at 10 a.m. or 8 a.m. WA time, we see that most of the ensemble is predicting a very similar pattern. So there's a fairly high degree of confidence here in the in the track forecast and you could see that from the Bureau of Meteorology's track out to three days even though as I said to you there was that error margin the error margin is actually quite a lot smaller than what we would normally expect at three days with the system moving fairly uh, fairly rapidly by that stage to the southwest or west southwest as we head to the Wednesday ensemble guidance, we see that overall the ensemble has now got it crossing the coast by Wednesday morning, more than likely going to do so on the Tuesday. But at this stage by the Wednesday morning, we see that the ensemble guidance is suggesting that it's now starting to push in a southerly direction uh, through the inland Pilbara. Uh, through the inland Pilbara region into the interior of Western Australia. And that's in association with a trough system that comes through and captures the tropical low or cyclone and pushes it in a southerly direction. So look folks, there's very little, uh, very little doubt in terms of its actual general track. The doubt exists as to how far offshore or even if it can get offshore the system goes. So that's the only real doubt in this particular system. As I say, WA systems, we don't mean to sound, uh, we don't mean to sound conceited or anything like that. They are a lot easier in general to predict than what we've seen in the Coral Sea. So you've seen the Coral Sea, it's been a schmozzle the, the last few weeks. These ones are, tend to be a little bit easier to track and to forecast by the computer models. So there tends to be a much higher degree of confidence in most of them. Some of them obviously still play some tricks on us, but this one here probably not going to. At this stage, as I say, the biggest doubt and the biggest change in threat level could be if the system pushes a little bit further offshore uh, and has that has that ability to um, uh, to not interact with that landmass and give it give itself sort of that 12 24 hours out there to get itself together and become a more significant system that's really the only added threat of this really the biggest issue with this is going to be the rain there is going to be a lot of rain in this region so let's talk rain now so starting tomorrow, we see a lot of rainfall here in the Kimberley region pushing as far south, some of those moderate to heavy falls pushing as far south as the Broome area and pushing well inland, so all the way through to the NT border and into central parts of the Northern Territory. We see a general easing of activity up here in the northern parts of the Northern Territory and we continue to see some very heavy rain in the Gulf Country and the Gulf of Carpentaria in general associated with ex-cyclone Fletcher. We also see some moderate to heavy falls of rain anywhere from about Townsville northwards to Cooktown and also along the central coast. Now that was all due to a trough system in the Coral Sea that has been pushing westwards over the last few days. And remembering a few, about a week ago, we were actually looking at that and possibly thinking that there could have been a chance at a cyclone. That has now since washed out into a trough system. But the good news about that 
washing out to a trough system is that a lot of the Queensland coast will see rain tomorrow. As we head to Monday, we see that that rain spreads further to the south uh, from the tropical low or tropical cyclone and we see it now pushing also as far west as Port Hedland and we see some of that heavier rain also shifting southwards as well. In the Gulf Country we see ex-cyclone Fletcher pushing to the west. Now look, ex-cyclone Fletcher as I said still has marginally favourable conditions there. If it can get offshore it may still have a chance at forming into a cyclone. On the Monday we start to see falls on the Queensland coast, that trough system has since washed out and we start to see falls now pushing further to the north, anywhere north of about Townsville uh, but particularly in the, uh, in the wet tropics area, so Ingham northwards is going to see those 25 to 50 mil falls. So folks really the, the conditions are going to be very wet and they're going to get wetter again for the Northern Territory after a brief lull. We're going to see uh, more heavy rain here on the Tuesday as cyclone as the cyclone which could be called Gillian if it forms will push in a southerly direction. Um, by the Tuesday or will have made landfall around the Port Hedland area or it to the east of that. Um, and we see some of that rain really seeping in. Look at these falls, uh, people. We've got 100, 150 millimetre falls here over 24 hours. Now, this is compounded onto the fact that you're probably going to see 25 to 50 on each day prior, on the day prior and the day after that too. In the Northern Territory, the eastern parts of the Northern Territory looking very active again as Tropical Low or Ex-Cyclone Fletcher pushes westwards. And as we, oh sorry, and over Queensland we see a complete decrease in the activity there which I'm sure will be welcomed by some North Queenslanders who have seen a lot of rain. On Wednesday we see that that activity over the NT starts to push in a southwesterly direction so we get a lot of rainfall over the interior parts of the Northern Territory. We see the tropical low or, or possible cyclone Gillian now well and truly starting to push southwards but we also see a maintenance of a fairly fresh northwesterly monsoonal flow here onto the coast pushing a lot of rain onto the coast and so that's why you're getting those 50 to 100, 100 plus millimetre falls right along that coastal fringe all the way through to uh, the northwestern Kimberley region. So it looks very active over the next four days across the tropics people and uh, that will keep you updated here over the next over the next uh, few nights as that tropical low particularly uh, has show signs of forming into a cyclone. Just a quick look ahead to the four days after that we continue to see some very heavy rain over inland parts of WA. We see heavy rain over the uh, Kimberley coastline even parts of the East Pilbara coastline we also see some heavy falls once again in the western or southwestern top end coastline. We also see the Gulf Country remains active and also into Inland Northern Territory. Unfortunately, Queenslanders, not much joy for you in days four to eight. So uh, really enjoy the, enjoy the rainfall tomorrow because that will be it for much of the coastline for at least the next week and some of the models suggesting into the future uh, after that week as well. So, folks, that's all we had got time for tonight. We will update you again tomorrow night. Good night.